Hey there, I'm Anders, and today we're going to be talking some hobbies. So why don't you join me as we dive back into the nasty, sick world of Mirkwood Forest. This is now the third video in a row about my fell beings of Mirkwood army, as I'm just really into the theme right now. All the models I've done so far are sick and twisted, and I really like the idea of carrying that along into some terrain for them. And so, of course, because Mirkwood is on top of everything else, a forest, the obvious thing was trees. Now trees are a bit of a funny one, as they've always been a bit tricky for wargaming terrain. While there are lots of really good looking ways of doing them, be they kits or DIY options, none of them quite work in my opinion. They're always either too small, too unrealistic, too fiddly, or just too expensive. So I really wanted to figure out some other option here. As alluded to before, there's obviously a lot of content about this online, be they videos or blog posts. Having looked through a lot of these, the ones that really stood out to me were how Star Wars Wargamers dealt with trees, mostly related to wargames based around Endor, as obviously the trees on that are just so huge that there'd be no way to realistically portray them on the table. So they just don't. Basically, the idea here is that rather than having the whole tree, they just have the bottom section of the trunk, about a foot or so high. This means that while you do have the footprint of the tree and the image of the trunk coming up, the rest of it is left up to your imagination, meaning that you don't have to worry about the branches covering up the game table or getting in the way of your models. I thought that was a really cool idea and would work great for Mirkwood as it was supposed to be a full thick covering over top. So I drew up a few sketches and built a little test piece. And with that done, I needed to get some wood. And what better material to make trees out of than, well, trees. I went around our backyard and did a bit of pruning of old dead dry branches, as I don't want to be using living ones here and then broke them up into small pieces with interesting shapes to them, as trees and Mirkwood are all twisted and weird, so I wanted to have pieces that would fit into that. Then I wanted to make sure there was nothing gross living in these, and to sterilize them basically. And while a lot of people do use their oven inside to do this, I don't really like the idea of taking these inside and cooking them in there, so instead I use my barbecue. I don't really know how long I left it on or how much this really did, but I left it on there a while until I was relatively happy that it had been hot enough to kill most of what could be in there. With that done, I then took a sander to them to get rid of all the loose bits while still trying to maintain as much texture as I could, before then cutting them to length with my miter saw. So with the trunks ready, we needed the bases, and to do this, I went to my favorite place, the dollar store, and found some... Wait, what's, what's that doing there? I forget about that. What I did find there was some great circular MDF discs, which would work great for the bases. So I cut them up into some more natural and organic shapes and just beveled the edges with a knife and a bit of sanding paper. The great thing here about mainly using wood is that I can make them really sturdy using both wood glue and screws up through the bottom to really attach them well. And for the bits that didn't have a great attachment point, I even went in with some construction adhesive to really secure them. For the texture itself, I want to match them to the bases of my other Mirkwood models, and so started by gluing down some rocks before digging out some old toys I found at the dollar store a long time ago. These figures have a kind of elfy look to them, so I decided to make them into statues to represent the civilization that may once have been there before the elves had to retreat deeper into the forest due to the corruption. 
So I took a hacksaw to these to cut them into smaller pieces before using some clippers to roughen up the edges and make them look a bit more like stone. On top of that, I actually took out a old piece of foam I'd cut a long time ago and added some brick texture to it to act as a base for one of the statues. Then I just glued all this together with some super glue and we were ready for the texture. I decided to actually go with a bit of homemade modeling compound. For this, I used some torn up toilet paper, some plaster powder, a bit of sand, and finally some paint before adding just enough water to make it spreadable. The idea here is that without too much moisture, this shouldn't warp as much, but we'll get back to that. For now, all I did was spread it out over the base, getting a little bit onto the trees themselves and the rocks to really tie it all together. And while this was still wet, I took some bricks that I made out of just some egg carton and stuck them into it to act as paths and roads like the dwarves were following. The initial piece I did like this didn't warp at all. However, all of these ones did. I don't really know why this was. Maybe I'd used a bit too much water here and should have kept it a bit drier, but for now, we just needed to figure out how to fix it. And to do this, I used my new favorite technique for fixing warping, which is basically to build up the base around it rather than fixing the base itself. So I laid down some parchment paper and then took out my construction adhesive again, applying this all around the bottom of the base and then pressing this down onto the parchment paper. This creates a flat surface while not actually sticking to the paper itself. After waiting for them all to dry, they all peeled off really nicely and were, while not perfectly flat, definitely better than they were before. And so with all that done, we did need to move on to painting. And I tried something a little bit new with this in that I tried to actually paint as little as possible. The ground texture is already brown because we used some paint in the actual compound. And the trees already look like trees because they're trees, they're bits of tree. So why fight that? We should use that to our advantage, same with the rocks. The one things I did need to base coat were around the edges to get rid of the nasty construction adhesive look, which I just used some brown paint and Mod Podge for. And the statues, which still look like the toys. So again, black paint and Mod Podge. As I've said in other videos, I'm really trying to push the idea of color in these models, using the set photos of the actual movie set to inspire that. And so I selected a whole bunch of different craft paints and different colors and watered them down heavily into very thin glazes with some water. Then I applied this in random patches all over the pieces. There was some method to this using bits of red and purple around the knots and joints of the wood and more light blues and greens for the rocks. However, I did still let this go fairly organically, mixing colors together and just going with whatever felt right at the time. Once these dried, I then painted up the statues with several layers of gray dry brushing to make them look like stone statues before I went over the entire thing with a dry brush of off-white vanilla paint to really bring it all together. As for the foliage, I laid down a layer of glue and first applied a few purple flowers to, again, bring in that color before some other random tufts. Then over top of all of it, I put down a thin layer of the craft store moss that I like using, as well as a few other colorful flocks I had lying around. Then after locking all of that in with a watered down glue and hitting it with a matte varnish, you were done.
So what do you guys think of these? Do you think they work for representing bigger, weirder trees in wargaming, or would you prefer that they were fuller with all their branches included? Personally, I really like how they turned out, as it lets you get that scale and style of forest you want, while not worrying about all the fiddly bits that make trees so difficult in wargaming. So thank you all for checking in, for subscribing, for commenting, for liking and sharing, and just for being here. And in particular, thank you to my patrons, as I cannot express how much I appreciate the support and your patience for me. I actually have another couple of really cool ideas, I think, for upcoming videos, so hopefully we'll be back sooner rather than later. And until then, have a good one all, and stay safe out there.